Hi, I'm Emily Muhlstein, and this is a presentation of the scoping phase of Refish Amendment 39, which deals with recreational red snapper regional management. Red snapper is a federally managed species, which means it's subject to federal conservation goals and laws, most notably the Magnuson-Stevens Act. Red snapper is treated as one regulatory unit in the federal waters of the Gulf of Mexico, and when states make regulations that are incompatible with the federal regulations, it impacts federal management measures because red snapper is managed with a Gulf-wide quota. So no matter where the red snapper are harvested, they still count against the Gulf-wide quota. Currently, red snapper is considered overfished, and the stock is under a rebuilding plan. So regional management is an idea that the council is working with, and it would enable areas of the Gulf to propose management measures that are most suitable to each region. Now, under a regional management scenario, red snapper would still remain a federally managed species and still be subject to federal conservation goals. Also, the red snapper annual quota could still not be exceeded. Regional management could provide flexibility in how the regional quota is managed. Regions could tailor regulations to their local situations, and regions would also be able to address the regional social and economic concerns. Under a regional management scenario, regions could have control over the season open and closure dates, whether or not they want to use weekend only or weekday only season scenarios. Regions could create their own no-take zones, and regions could also manipulate bag limits. There are three separate sections in this document. The first deals with how we would define regions. The second deals with the allocation of quota among the different regions. And finally, the third section deals with the logistics of administering a regional management program. So we'll walk through each one, starting with how the council would define regions. Regions could be defined on geographical, political, or ecological criteria. The boundaries could also extend into the federal waters, and then corresponding regulations would have to be defined by the council. Council could also define regions, or the regions would be allowed to submit their own proposals, effectively defining themselves. Just to walk you through some of the scenarios that are possible, this is a map of what it might look like if we decided to use two regions that were divided at the Mississippi River. This scenario also uses two regions, but here it's at the faunal break, which also happens to be at the Florida state line. This map shows three separate regions divided at the Texas state line, and then again at the Florida state line. This shows five possible regions that are divided by state. And then this map shows what it would look like if the state boundaries were extended into federal waters. There are a number of different challenges associated with defining regions. The more regions that are created, the more complex management becomes. The less regions that are used require greater cooperation between states that are sharing a region. Also, catch estimates for states that have low landings will have greater variability because sample size will be smaller. And then finally, state-based catch estimates may need to be evaluated for consistency. If the regions define themselves and decide to have their own catch estimate programs, those programs may not be consistent with one another or with the federal system, and there'd have to be a way to reckon that difference. So there's a number of different questions associated with how we would define regions. The first major question is, should the council define the regions, or should the regions identify themselves? We also wonder how many regions should be used, and where those regional boundaries should be. Also, the council would like to know if the regional boundaries should extend through the federal waters, and what regulations should be attached to those boundaries. So we'll move on to how the council would allocate quota among regions. A portion of the annual red snapper quota would have to be allocated to each region. The allocation decisions would have to follow the Council's fishery allocation policy, and if you're interested, you can find that on our website under Resources. And then, allocation decisions could be based on landings information, they could be based on the biological abundance of red snapper, or they could be based on angler abundance. So we'll start by 
considering allocating based on landings. So landings-based allocation decisions could be made using historical landings data. In that case, we wonder which years would be used to determine the historical landings. We could use the longest time series possible, or we could focus on more recent years. And then, would states get credit for landings outside of the federal season? Right now, Texas has a season that is different than the federal season. They allow a four fish bag limit in state waters year round. So would they be given credit for the fish that are caught outside of the federal season? Another option is to allocate based on biological abundance of the red snapper. Right now, it is expected that the red snapper abundance will shift geographically as the stock rebuilds. So should allocation be based on regional stock abundance? And finally, allocation decisions could be based on angler abundance or the relative proportion of anglers among each state. So would the number of angler trips by state be used? Or would the number of fishing license be used? Should headboats and charter boats be given a greater weight than private licenses? And should offshore anglers be differentiated from inshore anglers? And finally, we'll move on to the third section of the document, which deals with the logistics of administering a regional management program. So the administrative program established for region management could do a number of different things. It could create minimal management guidelines, review regional proposals, it could oversee license and permitting, it could specify regional monitoring, reporting, and enforcing, and it could also establish accountability measures. We'll go through each one of these starting with the logistics of the management guidelines. Should the council establish thresholds that regional management proposals may not exceed? For example, should a minimum size limit for red snapper be required across the Gulf? Uh, should regions be prohibited from making regulations that pr affect private or for hire vessels differently? What other minimum guidelines should the council consider using? Moving on to the logistics of regional management proposals. So a regional management plan will be required to follow federal mandates and also to adhere to that Gulf-wide quota. Each region would be required to submit a regional management proposal that would be reviewed for scientific accuracy, consistency with the Magnuson-Stevens Act, and with other applicable laws. Moving on to the logistics of permits and licenses. Federal conservation and management measures cannot discriminate between residents of different states. That's National Standard 4 of the Magnuson-Stevens Act. Right now, each of the Gulf states charges differently for residents and for non-resident fishing licenses. And that's in direct conflict with that national standard four. So how would the states permit for red snapper fishing under a regional management system? Moving on to the logistics of monitoring, reporting, and enforcement, a regional management plan will have to adhere to that Gulf-wide quota. So should regional management authorities be required to specify and provide analysis for monitoring their own landings and enforcement? Should the regional management authorities be required to report their own landings and discards? And finally, should regional management authorities be required to notify national marine fisheries when they are approaching their allocation? And finally, we'll discuss the logistics of accountability measures. Recreational red snapper is subject to closure when the quota is reached. So under our regional management system, the entire Gulf would close when the quota is reached, regardless of which regions have harvested their allocation. So we wonder, should each region be subject to their own individual accountability measures if their allocation is exceeded? And also, how would we deal with it if regional overages from one region affect other regions. And some final considerations on regional management. Should there be a sunset provision? And should initial allocation be periodically adjusted? So the council's in scoping phase. We're really just at the beginning of developing this document and we'd like to know what you have to say. Please submit your comments by January 29th of this year. You can do that by clicking on this link. If you want to read the full document, you can find it at this link below. 
And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact.